What are the things you're tempted to invest in the most? Uh, lots of people want to invest in their career, in climbing the ladder, in getting to that place because, well, they, they're investing in their retirement. They want that or they want the, the, the kudos, the power, the responsibility that comes with the thing now and feeling important. But there's the long-term plans, people, and people invest in those, in, in putting aside money for superannuation, for property, stock shares, whatever it might happen to be. Uh, lots of people invest masses amount of time and energy into their hobbies and their leisure activities, their experiences that they they want, they save for it and they go on the journey, the cruise, the whatever it might happen to be. It might be the 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 boat, it might be the 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 fishing experiences, whatever it might happen to be. People are investing all sorts of time, energy, money into these things. But as we hit Proverbs, we find out that there's things that are more important than that, that are really worth getting right. Because when they go wrong, it's a disaster for our lives. We're talking about family relationships, and let's have a look. We're in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 13. A foolish son is his father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like a constant dripping. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Uh, and you can see there that uh, family relationships are what is on view. It mentions children, it mentions uh, marriage partners, it mentions parents. Uh, and, and most of them it's looking at kind of the, the difficult times. And uh, you can see there that a foolish son is his father's ruin. Our kids and our grandkids, for that matter, have a huge impact on us. They have a huge impact on us financially, uh, and emotionally, uh, in in terms of time and energy, and and the ones that are going astray lead to the most heartache and pain and financial problems. We uh, we have friends who uh, the the parents are paying off their children's. Uh, massive fines to society as they've had to care for them things because the massive gambling debts have got into has left to theft and all sorts of other stuff uh, and criminal behavior and so a foolish son's their parents ruin they, they like you can uh, and so in terms of thinking about being a child to your parents whether you're an adult and you've got elderly parents uh, or your, your own children with you how do you how do you engage in a way that's constructive it's helpful that invests real time and energy into thinking about how I'm going to live for the benefit of my family. How am I going to raise my children and grandchildren, pray for them, that they wouldn't be the foolish child that that brings ruin to the family uh, and dishonor to God. Uh, how do we encourage them and lift them up? Uh, likewise, a quarrelsome wife is like a constant dripping. It's one of a number of of Proverbs in uh, the book of Proverbs about wives. Now Solomon's talking to his son, remember it's a book written by a father to a son and so from that point of view, but the same could be said the other way around. But an uh, antagonistic relationship, marriage relationship is really awful uh, and, uh, and and it can drive you crazy. Uh, I mean, they might be driven crazy by you, which is why they're quarrelsome and so on. And so it's worth asking the questions, am I really the source of the problems here? I might be annoyed at them, but are, am I the problem or is it both of us or, or what's going on? But also to learn from this that being quarrelsome and fighting everything and always wanting your way and opinion, whether you're a husband or a wife, in a family relationship really is a source of pain and frustration, like the foolish son or the foolish daughter. Right? The, the, you know, being at each other's throats is just no good. It's horrible. You know what the Chinese water torture is. You know They put you in a cell and just have that drip all night long it means you can't sleep and uh it's like that it's like and so making harmony in your relationship praying with each other building your relationship up all those things are kind of the the corollary of this right what if you want to learn from here not to be a, a constant nag and quarrelsome in everything whether your husband or wife well then yeah, how do i love them put their interests first like christ has put my interests first in dying for me he calls me to serve him you would th i think of that Passage in Philippians 2, each one should not look to his own interest, but to the interest of others and take on the attitude of Christ who, though he had everything, made himself nothing, became the form of a servant, even obedient to death on the cross. That is, he's dying for us. He's giving everything for us. There's the opposite of this quarrelsomeness of fighting for our rights, fighting for things to be the way that we want them. And so we've got to learn from this. This is God's wisdom, God's instruction. <coughs> and then 
it, it goes back to uh, fair parents, house them while they're inherited for parents. So like it's good that parents are putting things away and investing for the future and that's all going to be handed over. And so one thing to remember is there's nothing in this world that you could take with you when you're gone, right? It all remains here. It's given to someone else. <clears throat> for them, it's going to be passed on to others as well. But that's not the thing to invest in the most, right? He's saying that the family relationship as he goes on is way more important than building up this great property portfolio that you can hand on to someone else, right? And, and money, wealth can be inherited from parents. That's fantastic. But even more fantastic, a prudent wife is from the Lord. And so learn to praise God when family relationships are going well and teach your family to praise God. Or if you're not in a family, to the, the people around you, right? The people you encourage, the friends, the those acquaintances who become your spiritual family. Like, how do we encourage one another and not be this nagging, foolish person who who brings harm and disaster to everyone else around us, whether we're in a family unit like that or whatever situation we might happen to find ourselves in. God's really talking about the character development here of thankfulness, prudence, not foolishness, but wisdom in how we interact, not arguing and having a demeanor. It's, it's kind of like in Galatians where we're going to hit this week, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. That is the character here. Solomon's showing it in the negative of how it makes family life and friendship life and, and just it's the spiritual family, the church life so miserable uh, when it all goes wrong. And so we can think about our part in it and we can think about how we can encourage others not to be the foolish person who's bringing ruin to the family or the church or the spiritual family, whatever it might happen to be, the set of friends. You know, the not quarrelsome person who's always demanding and stuff and everything's wrong all the time and just getting in everyone's face. How to be prudent, right? Prudent with our time, with our money, with our reason, with our words, that we might be an encouragement, help, and a building up of others. This is the wisdom that God wants to bring to us. And he's teaching us by the negatives, uh, but he's teaching us what are the more, most important things are relationships, right? And, and family, spiritual family friendships, right? they are way more important than stuff, than experiences, than toys, than hobbies, than career, right? If you had to give all that up so you could have a good family life, it would be worth it, uh, according to God. Uh, of course, we want to remember that God is our Father and that He loves us and is with us no matter what. And so we don't want to be the foolish children towards Him, the one who loves us, who's given us everything, an inheritance that cannot perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for us. Why don't we pray that we might honour Him and honour the family He's put us into, His church, as well as the other relationships that we have in life that are a blessing from Him. Father, we pray, please, for harmonious families and for a harmonious church. Help us in our friendships, in our families, in our church life, in our community to always live in the way that's accord with your wisdom. Thank you. You teach us not to be foolish and thoughtless and just doing our own thing to the harm of others, uh, not taking them into account. Uh, we pray, please, you help us to, to repent of our foolishness. Uh, we pray, please, that you help us not to be quarrelsome, not to be argumentative and always just trying to be right and getting our way. Help us to take on the attitude of Jesus Christ who made himself nothing, that he might save us, love us, help us when we were in need. Thank you that you supplied all those needs. And we pray, please, that you help us to be prudent, prudent with our time, energy, money, efforts, uh, that we might honour you, that we might... Carefully steward the resources that you've given us, and we pray in all these things that you might help us to uh, flourish in families, in in friendships, uh, and in your church. Help us to love you as our Father, and to honour you, and to learn your ways. Thank you that Jesus models them, and thank you that Jesus has died that we might be forgiven for when we get it wrong and that he's alive again and he's bringing transforming power into our lives to live like you and to be uh, great children in your family. Uh, Father, please help us with that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for Church Sunday online or in person uh, and for another Devotion Monday, God willing. God bless. P.S. This Sunday night, 
come. The carols is on at, on their front lawn at church at St. Barnabas Ingleburn. Love you to be there. Six o'clock food, seven o'clock lots of family fun as the carols begin. Uh, it's going to be a spectacular night. God bless. <laughs>